Hello grade fours. This video is going to be about photography composition and how we can use the elements of art to make a really good photo. So we have our rule of thirds and our horizon line. Now you can see in this photo, uh, my horizon line's right dead in the middle, which they say is not really the best place to put your horizon line because then it's it's not as strong of a composition. It's better to put your horizon line on the top line or on that bottom line. And in this one, I've put it right in the middle. And you can see with this grid, if I want to crop it, you'll see how there's, it's, they say a strong composition has your main subject in one of the grid lines. So you can see I've put placed the sun on the bottom third line so that that's our main focal point in the image and there's the final image. So I've cropped off a lot of the bottom of the horizon line. Now my horizon line is a little lower and that should make a better composition. In this sunset, I've kept the horizon line low in the picture and mostly included the sky because the sky was the main focal point of the image. Here as well, we have the the mountains and the and the hills in the bottom part of the horizon line so that we're not and we've kept mostly sky and the moon as the main focal point of our image our rule of thirds also works on vertical pictures so you can see here's the horse and i've already kind of composed him on that lower third and if i bring my grid line in a little closer, crop them in a little closer, it becomes quite a strong composition in the end. Now, all these grid lines, these are on any editing program that you're gonna use, even the ones on your phone, they, all these editing programs, if you go to crop, they have this grid line so that you can use that to help you make a good, strong composition. And this one, this is a photo that Brody took and he has it right dead in the middle, which is okay. But um, again, with our composition, it looks a lot better if we place it in one of those grid lines. And by doing that, we did end up with a stronger composition. And this one actually won him first prize at the Millerville Fair a few years ago. And I feel the only reason it really won was when we took it and cropped it from being in the middle to being on our um, rule of thirds on that bottom third. Another good thing to try to do when you're taking any photo is try to declutter the background. Now in this photo of Mr. Emery, he was building this gate and yeah, if I had asked him to move his truck first, that would have been a lot better picture. We would be able to see the gate better and what was going on. So um, when we're able to, we should try to remove distracting elements from our background. In this photo of the birds, it's good, I like it, but it, it's busy. There's lots of birds, there's lots of things going on where here I've focused on one bird and you can see there's nothing happening in the background. So it's, you know, when you're able to, you know, move in close and declutter your background, it's a lot stronger photograph. And yeah, if you can get nice and close in your photos, um, this was also one that Brody took for the fair and won first place on. And yeah, it's, you could see how it's really interesting and neat composition, nice and close. Here the flower, so we're focused on just one flower and then not on the background so that we've got a good composition and we know what is the main subject in the photo here as well. We're going to just take a picture of one flower, not the entire rose bush, so that we are, have a good clear subject and we've removed any other elements out of the photo. Lines are another element of art and they help us to create a pleasing photograph when we use them in our photographs. So here you can see the trees are some solid lines in our photo here as well. 
little lines as well as the starburst of the sun it's created some lines um, here of course the fence and the road so these kind of lines help lead the viewer eye through the photo and you can use them in all kinds of different ways however creatively you want to to use your lines again here the fence is leading our viewer through the photo it kind of goes back from the corner and then it's kind of curving back towards the tree so it sort of leads us back to looking at the tree which is the main focus in this photo here we have some city lines with the crane paths are very good for for using for lines and leading us through the photo again and lines can also be curvy so here's a, a seashell with a a swirly curve to it so you can use curvy lines or straight lines just look for lines in things around you and how you can use them in your photo perspective so how can we use perspective in a photo how can we change our perspective if we look up we get a totally different view of the trees by looking up and get a, a different creative type of photograph by changing our perspective and here you know this would be just a normal way that someone would photograph children in the pool and there's possibly distracting things in the background if if there was things behind the fence whereas if I go above the kids and my perspective is looking down at them it gives a very different look to the photo and how do we use our perspective in the landscape well here is um, a waterfall out at Grotto Canyon and it's kind of neat but if I include the boys in the photo you can get a real sense of how big that landscape is and how tiny they are in the landscape same with the truck we know how the truck in Sparwood is quite big and if we include a person in it you really get a sense of just how big that truck is here's my family going for a hike at Square Butte Hill a couple years ago and yeah you can see you know they're pretty small in that great big world so sometimes it's neat to use that as a tool in perspective so we get a sh idea of how big or how small something is so shape and form what um, shapes are there out in the world and how can we use those shapes to create interesting photographs but here of course the bales are round and and we could use those shapes. And what is something's form? Here, you know, we can see the shape and form of the poppy seed. It's round and it's got a star on top. And here we have all the round eggs and we've lit them so that you can see their roundness and their smoothness. Here we have the uh, rose and it's a star shape. So just be aware and look at shapes in the landscape around you texture is um, this isn't a very good one of texture you can see that it's you can see the cracks and the texture of the wood but if we light it at, in the golden hour we can actually see the texture a lot better so we need to figure out how we're going to use our lighting to showcase texture in a landscape here we can see some and lots of photos include various elements of the same so we've got texture and line and form happening here so you know the tree roots are all gnarly and twisty as well as we can see the texture of the bark and the rocks textures are they wet are they um, slippery this was a piece of ice and we're seeing all the the bubbles in the ice this is also ice and we can see the texture and the pattern in this ice as the sun was just coming up and kind of lit that up and let us see the the neat patterns and texture of the ice here we have the flower it's pokey and it's got really pokey leaves we have rocks we can see the the form and the shapes in the rocks as well as their texture and here we have eggs from a robin's nest and we've got 
you know, a few different composition elements going on here. We've got the shape and form of the eggs and their blue color, as well as the, the shape and texture of the nest. So we've got a lot of round um, lines and round form. So it's neat to, to explore the different textures, form, and patterns in our landscape. Now here is some patterns in the sky so you can see there's patterns all around us and we just need to look for them and include them in our photos. Color. So how can we use color in our photos and how can we make stronger photos by using color? Now here um, we've got the orange butterfly on an orange flower so the colors really harmonize together. And here I actually created this one so I've tried to create a pleasing composition with color using warm colors and then the bright green to contrast with that. Here I've used all purples to create this purple composition. And here, um, obviously you can see it's all red. So red is my color and I've definitely been intentional about the color that I'm using here. I've made sure he was wearing a red shirt and I made my backdrop go red. Here, it sort of happened by chance, but it works really well. We've got you know, red wagon, red tricycle, red shirt. So it makes a, a really good um, cohesive photograph. Now here, um, you can see Brody's in a blue coat with the snowman. And it's a good snapshot. Of course, we want a picture of Brody with the snowman. But in this one with David, with the red coat and all the reds in the photo, the colors work together a lot better. Often they talk in art about value. So how is something bright or is something dark? And in photography, we would call that high key or low key. So this is a low key. Um, photo of the hourglass so you can see its value is very dark and there's just a little bit of light to bring your eye through the photo. This one when I make it black and white is an example of high key so its values are, are higher um, nice and bright high value for the photo here. Then we have shadows and light. How can we use our shadows and light to create interesting compositions. Now this one I've actually is more of a silhouette and David was in the tunnel and I let him go dark and the tunnel go dark and the brightness behind him create a silhouette of him. And here at the golden hour at the rock climbing wall we've allowed his shadow to be part of the composition. You can see it makes a neat pleasing photograph to include the shadow. So it's nice for us to challenge ourselves using the elements of art and photography composition to create great compositions in our photos. But what's also very important, and really the reason we take photos in the first place, I think, is to tell a story. So how can we tell a story with the photos we have? Well, here, the boys are at the pond and they're what are they doing at the pond? And oh, we saw some tadpole eggs, which was quite fascinating. I'd actually never seen the eggs on the pond like that before. And so we had a jar and we collected a small sample of them to take back with us. And here we are on our, our outing. And here's the jar. We can see the eggs in the bottom of the jar. And then they hatched. So you see it in the corner there, those tiny little lines in the bottom are the hatched tadpoles. And then we were able to keep them in our kitchen for a couple weeks and we got to watch the tadpoles grow. So it's neat to see what stories around us we can tell. And um, if can you tell the story in as few photos as possible? Can you tell it in three photos? Can you tell it in five photos? And just to create a, a small collection of your storytelling images.